Hey, what's going on, Transformer Addict? This is Seaspray here, yet again, give you a Transformer fix. We're going to lead into a Transformer Cybertron figure today. This is Primus Unleashed Galaxy Force Vector Prime. This guy came out between 2005 and 2006. He came out later towards the end of the series. Uh, this is a repaint of the uh, pre-existing mold of Vector Prime, which uh, I'll show you photos in a second. But regardless, this is a repaint of him, which is uh, kind of like a powered-up armor version. And as you can see in the package there, it looks pretty cool. comes with the Minicon Safeguard, who also got the re repaint treatment. And then you can see also comes with a nice uh, orange Energon sword, which is very tasty. And then also he comes with a Cyber Planet key, which looks very neat with all that silver painted on there. Looks really nice. And uh, this, uh, just take a quick look at the package here and throw it. We have, um, you know, you can see... Cyber Planet Key, and then uh, two times batteries required, and I think it possibly might be AAA or AA. Um, probably not going to put batteries in this just because of the whole, you know, uh, corrosive eating through the Transformers thing. But uh, Safeguard Minicon included, like I just said. Nice picture of uh, Vector Prime up there, nice artwork. And up on the left hand corner, you can see the different Cyber Planet uh, symbols, which is also in the key here. Ages 5 and up, and yep, so let's just take a quick look at the side here. Just a generic write up of the Cyber Planet and uh, Cybertron Ancient Home of Transformers. Uh, just a little write up here. If you want to just read this, you can just pause your screen now. And then we also have his technical data or statistics. They just read strength is unknown, intelligence 10, speed unknown, endurance 10, rank unknown, courage, fire blast, and skill are all 10s. That is pretty sweet. Very strong. Like he's pretty. He's like kind of like Optimus Prime, I guess, all tens or whatever. But uh, he's not very strong. Like he is strong, but he, he he can get taken down pretty easy. Speed. He's pretty fast. You know, doesn't really need to go fast because he can travel through time and space. Rank. Uh, he's an ancient, you know, Autobot Transformer, so it's kind of hard to rank him. But he's definitely up there in the high elite guard, I guess, if you if you want to put it, the high ranks. Okay, so. Moving on, you can just take a look at the back of the package here. It looks really nice. You can see Vector Prime and all his glory and his colors and his uh, Cybertronian space shuttle mode. And then, of course, Safeguard. Um, arm activated sword slashing sounds and uh, electronic battle sounds um, firing projectile. I only think it's the one sound for this, uh, the sword. It would be cool if they had two for like a uh, some kind of thrusting engine sound for the space shuttle mode. But either way, this is a great figure and I can't complain. I love the Vector Prime mold. And here we have Safeguard. He just he looks pretty much the same colors and red face and stuff like that. But uh, um, if you don't know the whole Cybertron concept, the whole thing was with uh, these keys and you insert it and it activates features uh, throughout. You know, if it's other sounds or weapons or or, um, or in any, any anything to that nature. So up top here we just have a little write up. Um, if you want to read it, you can pause your screen now. Very cool, and um, that is pretty much it. Uh, you know, this thing comes with like a little poster with figures. You can show us a little map of different planets, and I'll I'll show it to you when we take it out of the package. Um, I've had this thing since it came out, and you know, I haven't opened it up until now. I do have the other two Vector Primes, uh, the one that came out in the Universe 2.0 Classics line, and then um, the original Cybertron one. I do have an extra one, uh, but it's going to my good friend uh, Craig Andrews on Facebook. Uh, I told him I had a double, which I got in a Toys R Us exclusive 2-pack with the Burgundy Cybertronian Starscream, and I told him he can have it, so, very cool, so, um, I get to see the other figures, Quick Mix, uh, Galaxy Force Optimus Prime, Primus, and then uh, Menasaur with Heavy Load, very sweet. Okay, so, let's just take this guy out of the package and uh, take a look at him in further detail. Alright, to all are opened. Alright guys, I'm back and I took Galaxy Force Vector Prime out of the package. Just take a look here. Very nicely, you know, detailed figure. Great detail. Uh, the colors are not my personal favorite, but they are very nice. Uh, they do complement each other very well, and the hint of silver and blue in there just kind of adds to it that much more. Um, so we're just going to do a little 360 here. Show you off the little figure. Well, he's not really little. It's a Voyager size class, so he's, he's pretty decent size. But, uh... You know, the the transformation and, you know, the alternate mode is, you know, it's 
you gotta use your imagination. It's very simple. It's very, you know, he's just kind of bent backwards. You know, it's very simple, and uh, but it but it works. You know, it's kind of cool. It's very nice. You can see those nice orange translucent wings, which can be a bit of a pain. And with a couple of my figures, like uh, one of the Vector Primes, uh, the regular ones, his wings also on this side do not go out how they're supposed to, like this, kind of like more straight. You know, the colors, you know, they're not too bad. It's like a mocha, well, it's the only way to describe it, like a mocha kind of brown color. And I got, like I said, black, silver, uh, I got a nice Autobot insignia on the front there. looks pretty cool. And like I said, also with the, you know, the blue and the silver kind of separating throughout that, uh, I think it looks nice. Very cool. So, but on the back, you know, it's kind of like, you know, his thrusters or his, you know, crotchal region, but, uh, I guess his crotch really flares up on uh, on some some circumstances, but on thing. But anyways, um, you know it's okay. But I think where this thing lacks in simplicity, I think makes up for all this you know detailing that is gone throughout this mold. Uh, such care. All these details in here are like gears and um, you know like clockwork or mechanics going all throughout. It's really nicely done. It goes like all on the front, all on the back, and here you can see like the side of the gears. It's kind of neat. And then here are a little bit more of kind of like, just kind of like markings, uh, just lines, stuff like that. Not, not really gears, but maybe, maybe kind of like a tribal art, I guess, but not so much. And then what's kind of cool here, you can see those two orange pieces. This is actually this sword that actually comes out, which we'll just show you really quick here. Orange translucent, um, you know, like with these these plastic swords, you know, they're very flimsy, and if you have a warm place, they're tend to kind of go a little bit limp. But it's not really a big deal, you know, if it gets limp, flip it around, wait till it gets limp again, flip it around, and so on and so forth. But again, the detailing on throughout this figure, it's really nicely done. Um, very kind of like uh, mechanical, it's really well done, I think. But regardless, it's cool, I love, I love the concept where you just store it in here, and then it kind of blends in with the, the wings of the figure. Um, he does come with this little missile piece which goes in the front, which is in this plastic. And if you want to see the instructions or this map and this little write-up and other characters in the series, you can check out my blog spot. Um, I'll post the pics there and you definitely can check that out there and uh, tell me what you think. I'm trying to get that blog thing going a little bit more, um, but I've been lack slacking a little bit. But anyways, here it is. Uh, if you want to check it out, go there. I'm just going to take this little missile out and put it in here and show it to you. And here is the missile, or the firing projectile, as you can see. Again, orange translucent, nothing really spectacular about it. All you want to do, you just pop it in there, as so, and then you can just um, take this switch here, which is blended in with the black. It shoots out pretty good. Pretty good, actually. Oh! And next up for accessories, um, he, this guy comes with a few, you know, one, two, three, and four things here. It's pretty cool. So you get your money's worth, I think. Plus he has electronics, so that's pretty decent. So next up we have the Universal Planet Key featuring the same orange translucent plastic. It does have a little code on the back that you can go uh, on the Hasbro website, possibly. I know you could back in, you know, the Cybertron days, and then you could check out the code, and it, and it unlocks a bunch of features for you. But here's a universal planet key with the four planets on here with um, you know the silver paint on top which really is well done. The other cyber planet keys were just like the, uh, one translucent color plastic with uh, the silver symbol on it. But these ones are a lot nicer I think. So cyber planet key, all you want to do is just put it in here and then you can have it like that or you can take it out and if you have your two AAA batteries in there it does have the sword slashing sound but that is pretty much it. I don't think I'll put batteries in here. I'll just leave it like this because I'm not going to really play around with this guy too much, but this stupid thing came out. So, okay, so we, next up we have his Minicon Safeguard. As you can see, same mocha kind of brown color, uh, but it is a different lighter color on the barrel of the gun piece here, which I think is because it was black and then they painted it that color, which makes it look a little bit lighter. So I don't know if the black plastic was cheaper to manufacture than the brown plastic or what have you, but it's kind of weird that they went that way. But anyways, here it is. It's supposed to be a little jet, and uh, all you want to do, you know, you can put it on here, 
kind of give that space shuttle a little bit more um, chunk to it, a little bit more texture. You have it on there, looks pretty decent. And then robot mode, you can all have it on the side of its arm, to can look kind of like an arm cannon, which is very sweet. And then if you want, you can have uh, different mini cons attached to the sides or what have you. Totally up to you, but that's what it is. There's, you know, there's so much things that you can do with this thing. You know, you can, oh, the stupid thing. Just be careful with this thing. This thing has a, a strong spring in here. You don't want to shoot yourself in the eye. But, you know, there's so much playability with this. You can do whatever you want. You know, with these wings, you can have it like this. You can have it straight. You can move these forward. You can move these back. Uh, and these things on the side here, um, as you can see, these things move all around. One, two point hinges and can move up and down. These things can separate. And, you know, there's so much detail in here. It's crazy. Just, uh, you know, so much playability. So, like I said, it's very simple, but there's a lot to do, which uh, I think makes up for it. So we took a look at this figure. Uh, we talked about it a little bit. I showed you what kind of features it has. I showed you its, its accessories and what it can do and the playability value. We are now going to get into transformation, which is super easy. So, to transform this guy, like I said, very, very simple. And, and also, you can adjust these however you want, these wings, but there you go. The ratchety clinkety sound. Bring that down. As you can see, just bring these wings out and kind of get them out of the way for the time being. But next up, you can just take the whole whole nose cone of the space shuttle and just pull it down which is also on a double hinge so don't just pull it back kind of like pull it back and then kind of give it another little jerk which pulls it down as you can see pulls it back nicely and then next up all you want to do you can just take his head rotate it around which looks really nice take these shoulder panels up which are kind of like these shoulder pad guard things and then the arms are clicked are clipped in on little pegs and holes on the side of his hips which you can now go like this sorry bring the, the the forearm pads up and you can just adjust the arms to however you like which also has the nice clickety sound so this is the first time I've seen it in robot mode and it actually looks really nice so again you can have the wings like this or you can bring it down to the side which I think I'll do it kinda gives it that cape look I think in my opinion, you can even also bring it down one more if you want. Kind of bring it right behind there. Totally up to you. But for now, we'll just put it like this to kind of get it out of the way. Very nice. Oh, very nice figure. So cool. I love that face sculpt. It looks great. Just do a little 360 of the figure here. Just turn him around. Get his backpack on the back there. And if you don't want to have the sword or mini cons uh, attached to him, or mini con, you can peg it on here, store it in there, put his key in there, and there you go. But there you go. So let's just get in closer and take a look at this thing in further detail. It looks so nice. So like I said, you know, great detail. I love the face sculpt on this thing. It, just looking at it now, I didn't think this before. It has a really, um, like, especially with the red eyes, a Megatron look to it, in my opinion. Kind of has a reminiscence look to also uh, Scourge from the Jungle Planet. I guess with the same style, but uh, very nicely well done detailed figures. I love it. I love that blue metallic on there. It looks, it looks great. Those red eyes look pretty cool. A lot of personality for sure. And then, uh, you know, leading into the chest and the shoulders, you can see the silver on black. Um, I love this metallic silver uh, circle piece in there. It looks pretty cool. You can see this, this orange coloring throughout. And you can have these pieces, you know, they're kind of like, I don't know, little guard pieces or whatever. Even in the jet, jet mode or the shuttle mode, you can have these things up, kind of giving that. Um, I'll talk, you know what? We'll talk about more of that when I transform this back into the vehicle. But moving on, you know, black legs, got the same brown color on the, the bottom of the legs. You can see the toes. I don't think these pieces peg in or nothing like that. They kind of just stick out. So I would not want to get kicked in the face by him. But, uh, you know, this thing's nice. Nice arms, hands look pretty cool. You know, just, they're a little, a little stumpy, but, you know, they're not too bad. And uh, let's take a look at the back of the, the figure here again. And you can see the, how the, these things move around or whatever. And you can see the back pack here. You know, it's, it hangs off there, but it doesn't look too bad. You can see the nice paints and so much detail in here. Love the Autobot insignia. It would have been cool if they would have given the Autobot insignia somewhere on here, but uh, not a big deal. Very decent, very decent. Okay, so 
for articulation for this guy, his head can rotate 360, arms can move up and down, and uh, I think they move at the, sh the upper shoulder and also on uh, the connecting piece for the shoulder and the body. And the arms can also move 360, which gives off a uh, cl clankety sound, or ratchety sound. Arms can move in and out, and they're pretty tight at the elbow, more of a high pitch sound. And uh, you know these pieces move like this, and then you can also store safeguard on here, like I said, giving that arm cannon look, which is pretty decent. But straighten it out, it looks more menacing. Have it like that, and the Autobot and the Decepticons are gonna laugh at you, buddy. But and that's pretty much it for upper body. You know, his legs can move forward and and uh, back, which are pretty decent. In and out, they can move at the knee. 360 movement at the lower thigh, and then the feet can go in and out, which are pretty uh, ratchety as well. And that's pretty much it, aside from all this point, which we talked about already. And all you know, these shoulder panels move, and um, that is pretty much it. So right now I'm just going to show you, you know, how the sword looks, and kind of get the cape thing going, and the gun, and cyber planet key in his chest. I'm just going to show this guy off a little bit, and before we jump into comparisons with the the jets or the space shuttles. I just thought I'd show you this off a little bit, kind of show you his posability and stuff like that. So um, we're gonna show it now and then jump into the comparisons and then uh, and then end the review off, giving final thoughts. So you know this thing's pretty decent. I like it. Looks pretty sweet. Looks pretty very badass. I would not want to fight this guy. You know, the, the movement's a little bit hindered by, you know, certain aspects of the figure, but you can get in some pretty menacing poses, and uh, definitely show the Decepticons they have a run for their money right here. And here we have all Vector Primes, as you can see. Uh, these are the only ones that have, that have been released, except for uh, Alpha Trion uh, Retool one that has been released, which I don't have. But first up, we have Cybertron slash Galaxy Force Vector Prime. Which the Galaxy Force One does have a darker uh, paint tone to it, so, but this one's a bit more white and brown. The other one's a bit more kind of purple and stuff like that. But anyways, Vector Prime. I do have the Cyber Planet key, but it's uh, in a plastic bag somewhere, and I just can't find it. So this one came out first, um, and then we had this one that came out uh, about a half year or so later. This is the repaint uh, Galaxy Force Vector Prime that came out in the Cybertron series. And hence the Galaxy Force name was the Japanese name for the show of the series in Japan. So we have this one, which is pretty decent, not too bad. That's the original, and this is the third one that came out, which was the Transformers Universe Classic 2.0 Vector Prime. Sporting a little bit more of a darker tone, as you can see, but it looks pretty cool. And with that series, it had uh, Transformers Cybertron uh, was one of the like, toy lines in the series that was released. Uh, they showed different things through, you know, Beast Wars, Cybertron, stuff like that, Armada, and they um, they released characters that were, I guess, kind of popular for the namesake. But this one, you know, they gave them this kind of paint scheme rather than this one. Um, I think this one was represent most. I think this one was supposed to represent the G1 kind of 13 first Transformers or whatever. But uh, I could be wrong, but that's what I think. And uh, you know, it doesn't look too bad. That sword is very nice compared to. The clear blue or the clear orange. This one next to looks like a real sword. It looks awesome. So these are all Vector Primes. It would be cool to get like a Decepticon one, but this is it. Okay, so I'm gonna jump into transformation back to uh, space shuttle mode for Vector Prime, and then show you comparisons uh, with this stuff here. All right, let's do this. Okay, and here we have all their vehicle modes together for comparisons. We've got the original Cybertron one, pretty decent. Pretty much you know, like, kind of like a white, maybe even a cream color. Uh, some gold, which looks really cool. Some metallic light blue, very nice. <clears throat> and a little bit of red in the back there. And then we have the repaint, which was the mocha brown, orange, silver, black, so on and so forth. Metallic blue, very decent, not too bad. And then we have this nice black one here. Black, brown, silver, blue, a little bit of orange. I don't know, what do, you, what do you guys think? Which one do you like the best? The original one? This one? Or this one? It's hard, to, really hard to say, but uh, I can't really decide. 
Uh, I like aspects of each one differently, so I can't really pinpoint on which one I like the best. Okay, so to transform this guy back to his space shuttle aircraft carrier mode, just take off his sword, his cyber key, and his minicon. And now I'll just straighten the arms out, straighten the legs out, if you have an impo imposed um, manner or whatever. But uh, moving on, you can take his arms. And uh, you can just you know pull these things down, pull these things down, have it like that. But like I talked about earlier, um, there was no kind of thrusters on the back or whatever. But that's how it was when I showed it, and that's how it came when it trans was transformed. But if you want to turn it around, it's uh, a little bit tricky, but you can turn it around. Eventually. As you can see, we do have some thruster things there. So if you want to have it like that, you can. Which uh, you know, we'll do. Just, we'll just do it just for the sake of it. So these legs are a little bit tricky to get around, but eventually you can get them around and have it like that. So we got the arms. Take these pegs on the side of the hips, and then the holes on the forearms. Peg um, them together, and then you can now take the backpack piece that is on that double hinged hinge can't even talk here turn the head around and then place it there as you can see so we got this going here so next up we can do the legs which you can now pull them I guess to his back and then you can just straighten the feet out so there you go you can see you got those thrusters on the back now which makes a little bit more sense um, so to finish this off, all you want to do, there's actually pegs here and then holes there. Just line them up, get the holes in the, pe in the, in the pegs aligned with one another, and then adjust the wings however you want. Let me separate these if you want, and so on and so forth. And you got yourself the space shuttle mode uh, yet again. Woohoo! This thing's pretty sweet. I like this thing. I love Cybertronian kind of transformers, and this thing is uh, definitely up there with, uh, with the stuff I like. So, we're now going to finish this review off, and I'm going to just put the stuff back on and just kind of like finalize this. Alright, let's do this. Okay, I got the stuff back on, and I was mentioning earlier um, with these pieces here, if you want, you can to give this thing a little bit more dimension of, uh, you know, if you don't want it more so smooth and plain, you can adjust these pieces here if you want. Kind of give that little extra dimension. As you can see, you kind of give it a little tail fins or whatever. But that is pretty much it. So, on that note, I'll end this review off by saying this is a great figure. Uh, thanks for watching my review on this guy. Please leave a comment. Tell me what you think of this. If you have it or don't have it and want to get it or whatever. But, uh, yeah, this guy came out in 2005-2006. Um, I'm not sure, too sure if it's hard to find, but if you can find it, pick it up. It is pretty cool. Um, if you like this toy personally or if you like the character from the series or are a completionist and you want to get all the molds um, of the variants of this or whatever. But here it is. Pretty cool. And also, just to mention, Zach, Zizzle Rizzle 8707 did a review on this. Um, so definitely check that out, and um, that is pretty much it. So this is Seaspring. Thanks for watching my video review on Transformer Cybertron Galaxy Force Vector Prime with Nikon Safeguard. Take care, and I'll catch you guys later.